today as we uh, as we kind of shift our focus now towards towards Christmas, and I know some of you love Christmas all year long, and that's fine, but I like to get past Thanksgiving <laughs> before I get too focused on Christmas. So uh, the day after Thanksgiving, we started to do some decorating at our house and things like that, getting ready for Christmas. And I love it. I love that time of year. And uh, I even enjoy doing the decorating and all that and helping put up lights and that kind of thing. And we just have a good time with it. Uh, But as we think about Christmas and the Christmas season, this scripture came to mind and there is a, a major, major point that I'm going to share with you at the near the end of the message today. So I don't want anybody to go to sleep. I don't want you to zone out, tune me out. I want you to stay with me till we get there because there's a, a very, very important point that the Lord wanted me to make today and make sure everybody gets it. But before we get there, we're going to share a, a, a story here from... Uh, Luke chapter 2, which is often used, you know, for uh, the Christmas season. And there we're in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field. You know, we've, we've heard that many times. Well, if you read on down a little bit uh, in that chapter, you'll uh, read the story of Simeon. And I want to share that with you today, and I want to point out a few things along the way as we share this that I, I think might enhance your understanding of this story and maybe... Uh, give it a little more meaning to you as well. But in Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 22, it says, The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. What he was waiting for was for the Messiah to come. He believed what the prophets of old had said, and he was waiting for this Messiah to come. And whether or not he had a full picture of exactly what that kingdom was going to look like, I don't know. Many people who looked for the Messiah back then didn't understand what, his, what exactly he was going to do, but they knew that he was going to somehow come and save Israel. And they were looking for that day because, as you know, God's people have been oppressed uh, over the centuries and so, by so many other groups of people. And, and Uh, They were just looking for this day that the Messiah would come and he was going to rectify some things and make things better for them. And he was looking for that. And the Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. So, led by the Spirit, and I love this, he ended up being in the right place at the right time because he was allowing the Spirit to lead him. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, let me just stop right there. Some biblical scholars, I wish I were one, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I look to some of those to, uh, who know the original language and all that to help me understand it better. And Some Bible scholars believe that Simeon was well over 200 years old at this time. Well over 200. He he had lived a long life. Now, I've seen some people who were in their 90s. I've even seen one or two people that maybe had crossed that 100 threshold. And perhaps you have. Anybody seen anybody that was 150? 175? Me? Me? Yeah, well, thank you. I look pretty good for 175, don't I? Uh, but we we're not used to seeing. But the 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 folks that you've seen that were maybe a hundred, did they look like somebody who's thirty? 
And so I can only imagine a man who's well past 200, what he might have looked like. And here he comes and takes this child. Now, <laughs> uh, the thought crossed my mind of what Mary, you know, I don't know if he had to pull the child from her arms. I, I don't think so because Mary was in tune with the Lord as well, and she could sense that this man was, uh, was filled with the Holy Spirit. But to hand off your newborn, you know, sometimes older people are weaker. And uh, some older folks... Maybe somebody who's over 100, you might not be so inclined to give your newborn over <laughs> for them to hold it because they're kind of, you know, I don't know, shaky or a little weak. This guy was old, and he took the child into his arms. And uh, he, it was a blessing for him because he'd been looking for this child for so long. He took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. And he said this, now, Lord, you have kept your promise. What was that promise? That he would see the Messiah before he died. He knew that, how did he know that that's who that child was? The Holy Spirit revealed it to him, didn't he? He, he knew it, yeah. Now you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. Now, the child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Think about what Mary and Joseph had seen already. What had they seen prior to this? Kings coming with gifts? What else? Angels? A star hanging over their head? <laughs> Huh? Shepherds that, yeah, that angels had visited that came. I mean, they had seen some. They had been visited themselves. They had seen a lot of stuff happen already. And yet the scripture says they were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. You know why they were amazed? There may have still been some wonder in their mind about all that, that Jesus uh, represented, but I think they were amazed because of what he said in that previous scripture about the Gentiles. What? I think that's what they were amazed about. They All their life, they had looked for a Messiah who was going to come and redeem Israel, and he was going to save Israel, but wow, he's going to be a light to the Gentiles? I think that's that left them in amazement right there. That was something new, something they haven't heard before. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother. Now notice this. Simeon blesses them, and then who does he speak to? Mary. He blesses them, then he speaks to Mary. Now if you notice in the scripture, you don't hear a lot about Joseph after this. Some scholars believe that Joseph died before Jesus ever started his earthly ministry. Can't prove that, but it, it certainly is possible. There's not much said about him after this. And perhaps that's the reason Simeon knew in his spirit that he needed to address Mary regarding this. But he blessed them, and then he said to Mary, his mother, the child, this child is chosen by God, for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? You ever read that before or thought about that? This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign. Now, God loves signs. He uses rainbows and, he, you know, the serpent on the pole. In the wilderness, I mean, he likes, he uses signs. And Simeon said, he will be a sign. This child, Jesus, will be a sign from God, like a billboard. He's going to be a sign that people can look at, look at and see. And everybody's going to love him. Is that what he said? No, he will be a sign from God, which many people will what? 
speak against. He'll be a sign from God which many people will speak against. And so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. He's talking to Mary here. And we know as a mom, as a mother, and then a mother of this particular child in particular, all the things that she would see that child suffer through during his life. And you know there was some heartache there. She couldn't help it. She was mama. She was his mother. And she was going to have some heartbreak as she saw him fulfill what he came to do. Now, my point is this. In those last verses there, verse uh, 34 in particular, there's an extremely important point that's made right there. Simeon spoke some profound words, and it's so absolutely relevant to the day in which we live, to right now. So boys and girls, young people, young adults in particular, you're going to be here longer than some of the rest of us. Pay attention to this truth because this is a profound one. Simeon said Jesus is going to be the polarizer. You know what I mean when I say that? He's going to be destruction and salvation. He's going to be the divider. He's going to be the one that you can't be neutral around. You see, when you realize who Jesus is, you, you either accept or reject, but you can't be, you can't be neutral. Ethan, while you're up, can you, come, can you come help me with something right quick? I've got some magnets here, and these are some heavy-duty magnets here. They're strong. And I'm going to let Ethan feel how strong they are. See if you can pull those apart. They're pretty strong, aren't they? Yep. Wow. You have to kind of work at it to get them apart. I mean, they attach tightly, don't they? Mm -hmm. Wow. And then what happens if you try to turn it around the other way? Boy, it's hard to push them together, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all right. You can flip it around and, and let them get together. There you go. Click. And there they are, tight, tight. Thank you so much, and thank you for being my, my preaching buddy assistant so many times. Thank you for that. Jesus has the effect on people just like those magnets. When you realize who he is, you're either attracted, I mean attracted tightly, and you want to bond with him just like those magnets that you can't be separated, or you have the opposite. You're repelled by him. That's exactly what happened when he was on the earth. There were those who loved him and those who hated him. And it's the same way in this world that we live. And here's the truth that God wants me to share with you this morning. I hope you'll get it and take it with you and remember it in days to come because you're going to need it. I can see it coming. I can see it in the world in which we live. You're going to need this truth, and you're going to need to hang on to it when times get tough. You're going to need to remember what Pastor Doug told you and reminded you of from the Scripture. This world is, this world is good with Jesus as a, a nice, sweet uh, teacher who went about doing good, went about helping people, doing nice things and helping people and being good. He was just a good, nice man who, who helped people. Everybody's good with that. They're fine with that. Because then he's just like all the other figures that people have elevated in, in, religious, in the religious circles, I mean. You know, he, he's no different from Buddha or 
anybody else you want to name that's in some other, quote, religion, he's no different. He just fits right in, just wanted a gang. He's just a good man, did some good teaching, taught some good moral thoughts, good ideas. The world is okay with that. And they'll accept you as long as you put Jesus in that same box. Hey, it's you, your God is this and my God's this and we're all together. You know, They're just good men. And so we need to learn the moral lessons from them that we need to be nice and good to people and do good things and help people. Well, yeah, we do need to do good things and help people. But let me tell you something. Jesus, when he came to this earth, even, even as a child, even prophesied about, even when Simeon spoke over him, he knew, Simeon knew, that Jesus was going to be the polarizer. He was going to be like those magnets. People are either going to love him or hate him, but you're not going to encounter the real Jesus and be neutral. And sometimes we preach Jesus and somehow people walk away and they're in a neutral response to that. And it just makes me feel like maybe we're not preaching Jesus like we should because Jesus is a polarizer. You can't understand who Jesus is and be neutral about him. This morning even, as I share with you about Jesus, as you understand who he is, you've got a choice to make. You're going to either be attached to him tightly or you're going to be repelled one or the other, but you're not going to be neutral. You're not going to be in limbo. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking, no, you, no not really. If you know who Jesus is, you're going to respond one way or the other. He's the polarizer. And this world, listen to me, this world doesn't want to hear the rest of the story about Jesus. They're all right with him being a good teacher and a nice man and all of that. Famous historical figure. What they don't want to hear is that Jesus is a son of God, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father except through him. Jesus said that about himself. And most of the world don't want to hear that. In fact, they consider it, that, boy, he was very arrogant, wasn't he, to make a statement like that. No, he wasn't arrogant. He was just speaking the truth. That's who Jesus is, the son of the living God, the way, the truth, and the life. And when he said, no one comes to the Father except by me, that was the absolute truth. And you can put your trust in other historical figures who were did good deeds and went about helping people and had a following and all that stuff, but you're going to be sadly disappointed one of these days when you, when you pass on into eternity because you're going to find out that Jesus was the only one who was the Son of God. He's different. He's unique. He split time wide open <laughs> before and after and the world doesn't want to hear that anymore. They want us to keep Jesus in his little box, just one of the nice men from history. You're a Christ follower, fine. I'll follow this guy. Well, I follow this guy. Well, I do. And just put it all in a mix in a soup, and everybody's happy. But you start bringing Jesus out and saying, nope, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is the only way. You're going to get some people upset. This world, the social media will shut you down. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. But it was predicted long, long ago by a man who was over 200 years old. It was predicted that this Jesus, this child, he's going to be a polarizer. He's going to divide people. You, you're not going to be able to be neutral around him. And that's the way it was in his earthly ministry, and that's the way it still is today. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't remember anything else that I've told you, you remember that Pastor Doug used his time standing before you as God's representative to tell you, I want it recorded in, in heaven. I want it recorded somewhere 
that I made it clear and I announced to you and proclaimed it that Jesus is the truth, the way, the life. He is the Son of God. He is the one who shed his blood at Calvary and without that shed blood, there's no remission of sin. And if you put your faith and trust in somebody else other than Jesus, you're going to be disappointed for all eternity because Jesus is the way. He's the only way. And I don't care how watered down it gets in the world that we're living in and how many people want to change that dynamic and make it into something else so that we can all be just happy together. No. Sooner or later, young people, young adults, sooner or later, there's going to be a time that comes that you're going to have to stand up for Jesus. You're going to have to say, uh, no, Jesus is more than just a, a historical figure. Jesus is God's son. He was born of a virgin. Oh, come on. Yes, he was born of a virgin. He's God's son. And if you want to have eternity in heaven with him, with God the Father. He's the only way. You better put your trust in Jesus as your Savior. That's the only way. And when you say that, it automatically puts a dividing line there. It automatically is going to offend somebody. It's going to offend somebody. Now, we don't like to go around and offend people but if the gospel offends them, then they're going to have to be offended. Because we don't need to shy away from the gospel and shy away from Jesus and try to play it down. Well, you know, you're okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay. No, when it, when, where the rubber meets the road, <laughs> you better know what you know. And, you know, it's funny to me that when people, you know, if they hit their uh, thumb with a hammer or something like that, get their hand caught in the door, they don't say, oh, Buddha. Isn't it funny? They don't. <laughs> Why is it that it's his name that they always call out? Because he's the dividing line. He's a polarizer. He's the one that gets under their skin because somewhere down in their heart of hearts, somewhere, even the, the most devout atheist out there, somewhere down inside there's a missing part. And somewhere down inside there's something, there's a feeling, there's something that they know that this Jesus is the real deal. But they're trying to convince themselves that it's not so. I've heard of people uh, in catastrophes, in a disaster of some kind, planes about to crash. Who was it? Uh, Jesse Duplantis, I think, said something one time about that. All of a sudden, people around him say, Jesus, oh, Jesus. People that didn't know Jesus as their Savior at all, but they were calling out his name, boy, when they thought that plane was going down. Remember my magnets. When people hear who Jesus is, the only way, the Son of God, God and man in one, there are those that are going to be just like those magnets when they're opposed to each other. It, boy, it's going to rub them the wrong way. They're repelled by it. They're upset by it. How dare you? You're either going to be on that side of the line or you're going to be on the other side where just like those two magnets, you cling just as tight as you can to him. Oh, and that's where I am. I put my trust and confidence in him, and I'm clinging to him just as tight as I can, and he's clinging to me even tighter. But there is no neutral ground out there. You're on one side or the other.
So we need to make sure that we're attached. And then we need to make sure that when we talk about Jesus to other people, we present him in such a way that he's the polarizer. They need to know the truth, don't they? And I don't mean you got to badger people and be ugly to them and all that. But I'm saying when it comes up, and it might, and you have an opportunity and somebody asks you about this Jesus, you need to tell them who Jesus is. You say, but that's going to make them have to make a choice. Yep, that's exactly right. They can choose to accept or reject. But if, they're, if they don't, if they're neutral in their response, then we haven't presented Jesus as who he really is. Isn't that right? So I'm encouraging you. Stand firm in what you know. You may not know the whole Bible. You may not know everything there is. Look, we're all learning. This, this part is learning. But this part, the spirit man, is attached just like that magnet to the Father. And it's not because I did real good or scored enough points, went to church enough times that I could be attached like that. It's because somebody told me about Jesus and told me who he was and said he is the Son of God and he's the only way and there's heaven and there's hell and the only way you're going to get to heaven is by having a relationship with Jesus. Somebody told me that. And when they told me, I listened and I heard it and I, there was no neutral anymore. I had to make a choice. I had to choose. And I chose Jesus. And I'm so glad I did because I'm depending on that relationship now. I trust in him. I trust him that when my eyes close, if my eyes close in death one day, now I'm not looking for it. I'm going to live like Simeon, be 200 and something but if my eyes were closed in death, this body, they open them just to see Jesus standing there said, I still got you. I'm right here. I got you. We're still connected just like those magnets. Nothing can take you out of my hand. That's what he said, isn't it? Nothing can take us out of his hand. That's a bond. Let's choose him today. And make sure that when we present him to other people, that we present him for who he is. There's no neutral in that. It's either for or against. Jesus is the divider. He's a polarizer. You got pluses and minuses, just like on a battery. Polarity, polarizing. That's Jesus. He polarizes. He, when he walks in a room, they're, they're either for or against. You young folks, young adults, you prepare yourself. Because if it hadn't happened to you already, it will. Somebody at work or somebody somewhere along the way is going to challenge you on that. And you're going to have to make a choice. You can, you can say, well, you know, I believe in Jesus. You believe in Buddha, Krishna, or something. You know, you, you, we're, all, we're all good. But I'm encouraging you. Let the Holy Spirit in you give you the boldness. When that time comes, let the Holy Spirit in you give you the boldness that you need. He'll do it. He'll do it. Let him give you the boldness that you need to say, well, you may believe that way, but let me tell you how I believe. Jesus is the true Son of God, and it's only by his shed blood covering your sin that you can make it to heaven, that you can have a relationship with God the Father. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. That's who Jesus is. Jesus was a real deal. Your man was, he might have been a good man and taught some good things and did some good deeds, 
but Jesus was the Son of God. You can't even compare the two. They're not even in the same league. Sooner or later, you may have to make that point, and I trust that you will. Because I'll tell you what you don't want to happen. To get to eternity and realize that some of those people are in hell now because you didn't speak up and tell them who Jesus was. None of us want that on our hands, do we? Let's represent him properly as who he is. He's the polarizer, plus or minus, no in-between. Amen? Amen. And Simeon proclaimed it long ago. <laughs> Isn't that something to tell a mother about their child? Your, your son's going to, <laughs> he's going to save some and destroy others. Wow. But that's what happened. They, he, he knew that they were going to destroy themselves because of their rejection of Christ. Yeah. Would you stand with me, please? How many of you, uh, I, I really don't want everybody just looking to see what everybody else does. I mean, between you and God and the pastor this morning, how many of you would just slip your hand up and would, by doing so would say, Pastor Doug, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to stand firm. And if, if somebody ask me about who Jesus is, I'm going to be bold and, and with the Lord's help, with his strength, I'm going to tell them who Jesus is. How many of you would just do that? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your people and their commitment to you today. We do thank you so much for Jesus. And we understand that <laughs> When we're presented with him, it's a choice. But we're, we're going to make a choice one way or the other. And if we say we didn't make a choice, we just did. We have to decide to choose your son. And those of us in this room today, I believe, have all made that choice. We've decided for you. We're attached to you, just like those two magnets are drawn together. But our hearts go out to those who haven't yet understood that truth. And they're opposed to Jesus. So, Father, use us in whatever way that we can help further your kingdom. We don't want to go around badgering people and beating them over the head with the Bible and turning them off and that kind of thing. But yet at the same time, we don't want to be so passive that we just allow this world to put Jesus in some kind of box as just a good man. He was way more than a good man. <laughs> and he still is. And you paid a high price for us to have this thing we call salvation. And we thank you for that today. May we never be ashamed to say who Jesus really is even if it does force people to make a choice. Thank you for reminding me of that truth today and for reminding us that we need to be strong in our acceptance of you and bold in our presentation of you. I thank you for your blessings on your people and on this gathering today. In Jesus' name, amen.